All right, guys, so we're getting toward the end of the GI series. So when you look at this question, see if you can actually do the first question by yourself before I actually work it. Um, I think it's a good challenging question. I think it's right up there with what USMLE Step 1 has to offer. Um, so try to do that one and see how you do. And um, we're almost at the end, and hope you like the video. All right, guys, so this question reads, a 45-year-old male with history of alcohol use disorder presents to the emergency room after vomiting a large volume of blood. There's evidence of mild ascites. Upon endoscopy, there's evidence of esophageal varices. Patient is admitted and stabilized. Several days later, a liver biopsy reveals no abnormalities. Which of the following most closely identifies with the patient's condition? All right, so, you know, he's got, you know, ascites, He's got, he vomited all this blood. He's got esophageal varices. You know, I mean, out of all these, that's probably the most, you know, path pneumonic, uh, per se. Um, he's admitted and stabilized. And then we look at our answer choices. Alcohol, blood chiari, alpha, I don't know, portal, alpha 1 antitrypsin deficiency, portal vein, portal vein thrombosis, or hepatic cirrhosis. So you can see they're dealing with the liver and these esophageal varices. So this comes down to essentially the anatomy and, and do you understand, uh, there's a key part of this question um, that you really have to understand uh, the anatomy and make sure you get it right. So take a peek and see if you can get your answer choice there. And then let's kind of go over this thing. So, you know, we're in the liver area, okay? And this esophageal varices, we gotta understand the mechanism. So coming in, and I'm not the best person to draw things, but say, you know, coming into the uh, liver, you, ha you have the blood that comes in through the, and you got to know this, okay, you got to know it's the portal vein, okay, things kind of drain back to the liver, portal vein, you say, well, well, what things do that? Well, from the esophagus is one of them, okay, stomach, um, you know, spleen, pancreas, and the list goes on and on, right? Intestines. So these guys, now, these guys receive blood flow from the heart, you know, and its tributaries and stuff like that. So we can just say this is the, um, the aorta, okay? And it gives blood to these guys. And then, as you know, blood comes, goes to a place and then it leaves via the via vein, okay? And this vein ultimately comes the portal vein which goes back to the liver, okay? So just to have a little bit more um, understanding of, of the anatomy around here is that the liver, you know, is supplied by the hepatic artery, okay? So it's supplied by blood from both the portal vein, right, coming in to the liver, and the hepatic artery, that's essentially it. That's come bringing blood to the to the liver and the portal vein. You know, essentially, seventy five percent of the blood is coming from there and twenty five percent from the hepatic artery. But nevertheless, it's flowing in. Okay. And then, as the blood flows out over here, this is called the hepatic vein. Okay. So again, portal vein hepatic vein. You got to know the difference, right? You're not going to get those mi mixed up. Portal vein on this side goes into the liver, and then as liver drains, it drains through the hepatic vein. And then the last little piece of this anatomy that comes into this is you got to know this bile duct, okay? This is the common bile duct. Now, who cares, right? Well, bile, you know, obviously it's made in the liver, okay? The bile comes out into the common, uh, common hepatic duct, goes up in the cystic duct, right? Gets stored in the gallbladder, okay? So again, bile made in the liver goes down to the common uh, hepatic duct, comes up the cystic duct, stored in the gallbladder until it's time to go to work. When it is squeezed, right, 
digestion and we and or whatever when we need some bile it's going to release what or, or what's the what's the hormone that's going to kick in and say okay i need you to squeeze some of this stuff cck okay and of course then it goes back down uh cystic duct into the common bile duct and on its way to do some business uh, as it should so, and then again, as the liver drains through the hepatic vein, you got the inferior vena cava. And then the last little thing I want to make mention is when someone has a shot liver, what's that procedure that go that connects the portal vein to the hepatic vein? You know, if the liver is shot, you got to bypass this. And then that's called the tips, right? Tips procedure. Um, yeah, just tips procedure. Excuse me, all right offhand. And that connects the portal vein to the hepatic vein. So that's the basics of what you got to know for the anatomy piece in a question like this. So think about it. You've got esophageal varices. So esophageal varices, where's the problem? Is the problem on the arterial side or is the problem on the venous side? They're, they're engorged per se. Well, there must be a problem on the venous side, right? And so as this backs up, it backs up, it backs up, you know, it's going to create a problem. And there's your varices, okay? So the problem's on this side. But then where on this side? It could be here, it could be here, it could be here, it could be here, you know, where? So let's just look at our answer choices. Is it alcohol um, use disorder? Well, that's too broad. You know, you want to jump all over this, but that's just too broad, which is the following most, most closely identifies. For right now, that one's just too broad. Is it Bud Chiari? Well, Bud Chiari syndrome is when there's an issue with the... Um, hepatic vein, right? There's an issue here, then I'm going to call it Bud Chiari syndrome. Now, uh, alpha-1 antitrypsin, you know, we're not even in the same uh, page on that one, you know. Portal vein thrombosis, okay, well, right here, okay, that means the problem's right here. Okay, well, that could, that could possibly cause it. So could this. Hepatic cirrhosis, okay, well maybe, I mean, it's in the middle there. So how do I know, how do I know, was it the portal vein caused me the backup? Was it the uh, cirrhosis caused me the backup? Or was it a Bud Chiari? What did they tell me up in this problem that gives me, that was the single clue that on step, on the step exam, they're gonna have to tell you this. It's this right here. Several days later, liver biopsy reveals no abnormalities. So think about this. If there was a problem here and this got backed up, would there be abnormalities within the liver if this guy backed you up? Yeah, of course there would. There would be some issues in the liver. So if it was Bud Chiari, this would have had some type of abnormality. If it was hepatic cirrhosis, of course, that would have some type of abnormality. The fact is the problem was right here in the portal vein, so the liver was clean, right? The liver was clean. He had no trouble because the problem was before that then this gets backed up, causes, causing the esophageal varices. But this little key statement right there is the key to this whole type of problem. It's a very good problem. I like this one because everything relies on do you understand the anatomy and how things flow through here. The correct answer, the only answer is choice D, portal vein thrombosis. And usually they always they want you to differentiate between portal vein and the, the blood, blood chiari. So I like that question. Um, and then the second question should be relatively simple at this point. It says, a 44-year-old woman presents to the emergency room with severe abdominal pain that started after eating heavy meal at a family reunion. She reports that this type of, this type of symptom uh, presented, presented before after eating a fatty food meal. Her BMI is 32. There is tenderness to palpation in the subcostal region. Which of the following is most associated with the patient's condition? Is it gastrin, vasoactive intestinal polypeptide, cholecystokinin, ECL, or uh, GCL? Well, you know, that whole, it's a female, um, BMI is 32, right? What's normal BMI? 18 to 25, make sure you have that. That's normal. 25 to 30 is gonna be, over, you know, uh, overweight, obese, and then 30 plus, um, you know, I don't, I don't think I don't know if that classifies as morbidly obese, but it's right up there. Okay, her BMI is 32, so she's it's overweight, having difficulty eating the fatty meal. So what do we need to eat the fatty meal? The gallbladder has to kind of kick in. Which one's associated with that? 
with the gallbladder, fatty meal, trying to process the fatty foods. Out of all these answer choices, I mean, this is just strictly a memorization, kind of based on this one, it's gonna be the cholecystokinin, all right? Gastrin, we learned, you know, that's kind of in the stomach. You know, we had the, uh, the parietal cell, and we had the, the proton pump, okay? And then we also talked about the, um, the G cell, releases gastrin. We talked about the parietal cell having all these receptors on it. Um, you know, gastrin did one, acetylcholine, and then uh, histamine. And then there's the ECL. Remember the ECL, when he got activated, actually he had a little gastrin thing on there. When he got activated, he released um, histamine that also activated the parietal cell proton pump. Um, and then again, G cells here, who releases gastrin. So all these are just distractors. The vasoactive intestinal polypeptide, you know, remember that the VIPOMA is when it's uh, excess copious, as they say, uh, watery diarrhea uh, and such like that. So again, this is just strictly memorization. The real take home point of this video is knowing this anatomy and making sure you can differentiate where the problem is. They gotta give you that, so. Hope you liked the video.